Isn't that beautiful? I have text messages coming through saying, oh, isn't this beautiful music? And we will, during the course of the week, play you some more from Milizia Illich's CD, Stir the Sky. That was Evie's song. And together with Terry Lane and David Marsh, who's in the studio, to talk to us as well as giving us the chance to enjoy some of her beautiful music. Milizia, wonderful to hear that. Was that your own composition? Yes, it was. Um, and I composed it about a year ago. Um, when I was living in the United Kingdom. It's dedicated to my best friend, Evelyn uh, Liebenhuller. <laughs> She's Swiss. I love the girl. And we were flatmates, actually, when I came over to the UK. And that was my hardest period when I was there. How old were you when you first picked up a guitar? I was seven years of age. And I was living back in former Yugoslavia, in Bosnia, actually. And when the war happened, my family migrated to Australia. I was about 11 years of age. Um, had to stop playing, we couldn't afford another instrument, we had to start from scratch. And then I won a music scholarship, I was playing on a friend's instrument in a hallway um, at a school, general school, and um, a teacher heard me and just offered me a scholarship. And that was um, really an opportunity that I could continue to play. Are, are you one of those ghastly individuals that just picks an instrument up and can play it? Uh, not quite so, actually. Thank goodness. <laughs> when I was tested for uh, musical talent uh, at the very beginning of my career, I got told I had no talent. Although this sounds very stereotypical, so I won't go into it. But I cried and I cried. Um, and what thankfully... The, what is the test? It was like an, a hearing test. They were playing notes on the piano. I was meant to repeat. And she said, repeat oh, this. And I didn't have any words to repeat it to him because my parents, my mother is a doctor, my dad's a lawyer, they never had a musical background uh, and I, I didn't know what to do, really. So this is a test of pitch? It was a test of pitch, yeah. but I just thought um, I should repeat, be repeating some words. I was just used to pop music, that's all I ever listened to. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, little, why, why the guitar? My sister played the violin, and that was very screechy, I imagine. <laughs> and my parents could not handle another one. Um, and <laughs> she was just a year older, and she was very, very talented. Uh, but my parents just thought it's a portable instrument, it looks very nice, and they could just mention me with a guitar, and I just loved the sound. The moment I took a guitar, I'd never So did you have to leave your guitar behind? Yes, I did, yes. Um, when we left Bosnia, we had to make art um, as if we weren't leaving for good, um, because my father came with us as well. And we were uh, pretending that we were going to Belgrade for a holiday. And um, in the meantime, my mum sorted out uh, the visas to go that to Australia. Have you ever been there? Yes, I have, yes. It's a lovely place. I mean, friends of mine from Australia have been to visit. Australian friends, they were just born here. And they said, you know, oh, it's amazing. You know, why did you come here? But it was the situation, really. We had beautiful nature in Bosnia. And um, I'm very proud of the heritage over there as well. Beautiful churches, mosques. Um, it is very complicated, I it must say. It certainly is. <laughs> it defines <laughs> complication. <laughs> as you would know, or being journalists. But, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of culture comes out of there. And it is a beautiful place, but I'm... I'm, I consider myself to be Australian. I was uh, a child when I came here, and this is my home. So, what community were you from in Bosnia? Were you a Serbian were, community. So you were Serbian Orthodox? Yes, Serbian Orthodox, yes. Right. So it was very complicated, I have to say, but it wasn't that a place for anybody to be, because nobody wins in a war. And um, the main uh, issue was the safety of our family. So it was getting out nerve-wracking and tense? It was very intense. Uh, I was in the last uh, civilian aeroplane to fly out of Bosnia, May 20th, I believe, 1992. Mm. And I'm not entirely sure, 20th, 21st. It was the last plane that was allowed to fly out of Bosnia after that all flights were banned. Um, and um, yes, I mean, we had parachutes jumping out of the aeroplane in the middle of the flight as well, so that was quite intense. You sit what? study. Um, <laughs> why, why, were they, why were they bailing out? Uh, no, uh, parachutes, it was a military aeroplane as oh, well, uh, but carrying <laughs> civilian population. Mm -hmm. well. You since studied in Prague, performed in Singapore at Englewatt, and done all sorts of things, Jose Carreras, all, all sorts of names we could drop and the like. Do you think about how your life may have been? If not for Back the war. In Bosnia, I would have stopped playing guitar. It was just becoming unfashionable with my friends. It was very cool to do when we were turning 11. But at the age of 12, everybody was getting a bit rebellious and just leaving their instruments. And um, 
I'm pretty certain I would have dropped it, uh, but as we came to Australia, it was the connection, actually, from Bosnia. It was something so familiar. I didn't speak any English. But well. there's something about the being displaced experience, the migrant and even refugee experience. That's right. That time and time again, we've seen it with business figures, we've seen it with cultural figures. We see it time and time again, it seems to lead to people feeling a need to excel, to express themselves, to push themselves in Very whatever true. is their chosen field. Very true. My parents uh, suffered terribly with their qualifications when they came to Australia. I presume they weren't immediately recognised, if ever. They haven't still been recognised. So a doctor and a lawyer, That's right. who couldn't be doctors or lawyers? Uh, they could have been if they studied for eight years through the procedure. My parents' friends, they have done it. But so what my are they parents, doing? My parents are very proud people. They didn't want to go in the door. What they are just, they doing? My father is a financial advisor, and my mum is currently his assistant. <laughs> and it is a gorgeous story. They're enjoying themselves. Um, and, and their refugee daughter is uh, an internationally famous they didn't, they didn't beg you to become a lawyer or a doctor. <laughs> oh, they advised me not to. They just said, um, just learn something international. You never know, actually, when you will move. It's very, it's very portable. Yes, <laughs> it is. And it's a portable instrument. Um, uh, I have, uh, in the course of my career, interviewed John Williams, Oh, Julian Bream and Slava Gregorian, uh -huh. and the one thing that they have in common is incredibly muscular fingers. Well, I have very now, flexible fingers. Are you double jointed? I was um, watching you I'm playing flexible. before. What is it? Hyperflexible. So, so your, your, your hands go off in directions that the rest of us can't possibly do. Would you not do that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very, very spooky You wasted an illustration. <laughs> Um, Describe it for people who can't see it the way we can. Yes, um, well, it, it is basically just your joints can bend the other way. And is that your anatomy or your training? Uh, well, both. If, if I don't train, I, I would lose it, I'm pretty sure. But it is also in my anatomy, and I've done gymnastics since I was about five. And, um, well, being Eastern European, you tend to do gymnastics, and goodness knows what. Um, music, classical music or ballet, whatever, and I had done all those things. So it was actually partly my upbringing, but also my anatomy. But whenever I need a long stretch, I can stretch from my first fret until the seventh fret. Uh, on a classical guitar, which I must add, has wider fretting than an acoustic guitar, than something like Tommy Emmanuel would play. Um, so it has wider fretting. So um, I do use it when I need it, and it is an asset. My thumbs also point in other directions. Your thumbs bend backwards. That's right. Uh, it, it's almost as if the joint <laughs> goes right around. <laughs> Dave, oh, David Mars comparing. Right, well. Dave, David Mars has a, a new career awaiting <laughs> him as oh, an international celebrated <laughs> guitarist. <laughs> So that gives you, well, a, a certain physical advantage over many other people. Obviously. Yes, so, so although my fingers are not very muscular, I imagine um, they are highly agile. It doesn't help you compose, though, does it? That's all in the mind. It is. It is, and I would say it is in the heart, it's in the experience. Okay. Yeah. So, so when you're writing music, you are thinking of something else. Definitely. I mean, it's, so the music, in a sense, is not pure music, it's, it's a story. Uh, perhaps sometimes I would um, have a piece of manuscript and write out a song and then it would occur to me what the experience is about. Um, but sometimes it's just by playing a beautiful chord on the guitar and thinking, oh yes, this is right. Mm -hmm. um, and it tells something to me. So, But it's usually very reflective and um, you need to spend some quite lonely times to be able to compose very well, I believe. Well, well, Lisa, I don't know if you've met the virtuoso guitarist Richard Stubbs, who oh. joins us in the studio. Nice to meet you. Oh, lots nice of hands He has <laughs> tree trunks as fingers and plays <laughs> But I have, in fact, thank you, long, delicate fingers that yeah. can make the bridge. Look at that. See that? Look at them making the bridge. See that? I can do that. Oh, I can't yes. actually do anything with them, yeah. but potentially they're there. Yeah. Could I provide some balance here? Mm. Those, Those hands can't do that. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Okay. He's called you blasphemy. They're large and gentle. Well, they have the potential Balanced to do that. Are there any butchers in the stubs? I said they had potential to do it. I didn't say they were able to do it. I said that the good Lord, the divine spirit has equipped me with the all the tools except the ability. Yeah. And the motivation and some of the other uh, things. No, I've tried it. I've given it a go. Melitza Illich's new CD is called Stir the Sky, distributed through Move Records. And there are two concerts, one at the Iwaki Auditorium tonight at half past six here at the ABC Centre at Southbank. Tomorrow at the Fitzroy Town Hall Reading Room, Napier Street. Tomorrow at 6.30 also. So that's tomorrow, 6.30, Fitzroy Town Hall. Tonight at the Iwaki Auditorium, 
6.30 here at South Bank. Stir the Sky is the CD if you're looking for Melitza's work, and it's pronounced I, it's pronounced Melitza Illich, spelt I-L-I-C, if you're asking the shop to get it in for you. And ABC shops would have them. Oh, excellent. <laughs> As they should, too. This afternoon, Richard? This afternoon, yesterday, I spoke about the concept that we 